Every single 3D printer that I own and have in my studio serves a different purpose. But the X Plus 3 from Chidi Tech, it is on a brand new level. Chidi Tech has released printers before, but they have gone relatively unnoticed until the X Plus 3 series. So I have never used any of their products before, but I can safely say that Chidi Tech is trying to enter the flagship market. So Chidi Tech uses their own custom slicer, which is built on Prusa Slicer. Now this is simultaneously good and bad, and it's good because I really do love the base of Prusa Slicer, but it's bad because I am sick and tired of custom slicers. Now this is probably an issue that is amplified because I have 20 plus printers, and I probably have to use anywhere from 5 to 10 slicers, depending on which printer I'm using. But most people watching this video probably have one or two printers so that likely won't be an issue to you but be aware that using their slicer is going to give you the best user experience all of that being said if you do want to use Cura or some other slicer be aware that you're gonna to have to create your own profile because all of the custom profiles for this machine are of course in Chitty Slicer. All right, so this machine is clearly designed for power users because it's coming with a fully enclosed chamber. It's coming with a heated chamber. It has a hardened steel nozzle and all metal hot end that can reach up to 300 degrees Celsius and this machine is running clipper. Additionally, all of the X3 series printers are going to come with a filament dry box that you can print directly from. Now this is not a heated dry box, but it is an airtight storage container. That dry box is going to allow you to print hygroscopic materials directly from this machine. So even though the X Plus 3 is running Clipper firmware, unfortunately it's going to be very difficult or impossible to physically mod this machine. So that is purely based on the way this machine has been designed and constructed and anything that Chidi Tech doesn't want you to remove is basically not removable. That being said, thankfully Chidi Tech has given us a fully unlocked version of Clipper, so any and all Clipper firmware mods that you want to undergo can be done on the X Plus 3. However, it is important to note that because this machine is running Clipper on a custom board, you're gonna have to wait for Chidi Tech to update Clipper and push a firmware update to this machine if you do wanna get the latest versions of Clipper. So during my time printing on this machine, the filament holder has made me incredibly, incredibly frustrated. As with every other Speedy Core XY machine, this thing is gonna load from the back, but it's a little bit different than any of the other machines because this thing is absolutely <laughs> Absolutely monstrous in its size and its weight. Gaining access to that filament holder is very, very hard, and even if you can gain access to it, being able to load the filament into the Bowden tube is even more difficult. Because this process is so difficult, I actually cannot recommend this machine if your primary material is PLA. So what if you're printing a material that's not as basic and easy as PLA? Like what if you're printing PAHCF or GF? Well, you can still use that filament dry box and and of course you should, but I personally feel like if you're printing a material that sensitive, it's better to actually print from an active dry box rather than a passive dry box. Now that doesn't inherently nullify the feature of having the built-in dry box, but I would really like to see a future model of this machine have better filament loading and possibly an active dry box. Now I know you guys have heard of PCBWay before, but what you might not know is they have a 3D printing department as well. Now the great thing about PCBWay is they don't only print standard materials, you can also print peak, ASA, or even stainless steel and titanium. Now in order to provide the highest quality service, prior to printing, PCBWay is actually going to provide form a full model analysis of the file you uploaded. That will ensure when your print arrives, it's going to be exactly as you envisioned it. What are you waiting for? If you want to learn more, check the link in the description below. So Chidi has clearly put in a bunch of effort behind the scenes. And I say that because the hot end wiring on this machine is one of the best, if not the best in the business. This machine has color-coded wiring harnesses as well as color-coded connectors on the PCB connected to the hot end, and that's going to make assembling the hot end on this a complete brainless task. Now I haven't disassembled the rest of this machine, but given the top level detail given to the hot end and its PCB board, I can confidently assume that the rest of the machine was designed very well, and that gives me a really good peace of mind. So of course this machine is obviously designed to be an engineering material beast, so I tried to print some PETCF. Unfortunately, in the Chidi Slicer, there wasn't a custom profile for it, so I went ahead and made my own profile, and I 
printed a calibration cube. The cube printed absolutely flawlessly on the first try, but that wasn't enough for me. I wanted to print a more advanced part. Sadly, I believe my flow rate on that custom profile peaked just a little too high and I completely jammed the hot end, worse than I've ever jammed any hot end before. I tried to use my torch to burn out this material from the inside of the throat, but that just caused even more excessive damage and it made the entire hot end good for the trash can. Because of this, I really do wish that Chidi Tech would release more profiles for materials that are engineering grade materials. There's a big list of them already, but it doesn't have all of them and I do think that this issue was caused by me because my profile wasn't that great. We just talked about how I don't bring you in camera all the time, but now I am. So not everyone has access to these really expensive engineering grade filaments, but a lot of people will be printing material like ABS, so I wanted to do an ABS torture test. In the many years that I have printed ABS, I have never been able to get a print come off the build plate without a brim that did not have any warping whatsoever, and I thought the true, true torture test of ABS printing was to print a dragon. Of course, my go-to is gonna be the Imperial Dragon from Dan over at Flexi Factory. If I can get an Imperial Dragon with 30 plus individual tail pieces to print on the Chitty Tech X plus three without having any of those tail pieces warping and ruining the part, I would say the heated chamber in this machine is a perfect, perfect implementation. I'm not gonna lie, I had very low expectations for this working, but I was completely and entirely blown out of the water when this model printed flawlessly on the first attempt. What blows my mind even more is that this dragon printed in white ABS looks even better than most people printing this dragon in PLA on an Ender 3 or some other basic printer. This dragon speaks volumes well above any other praise I can possibly give. The heated chamber in this machine is incredible. So shortly after this print, I noticed I was printing with a non-optimal Z offset. I noticed that if the nozzle was too close to the print bed, that the fans were so powerful that some of the filament would ooze out of the side and then the fan would blow it and connect it to the nozzle. And throughout the print, this would build up and the nozzle would jam and clog completely. Unfortunately, this happened to me four or five times before I figured out what the issue was. For some reason, the paper method to calculate the Z offset just doesn't work well, and I think that might be due to the type of Z sensor that this printer is using. What's disappointing is short of going through the entire Z offset calibration in the main menu, there really is no way to adjust this value. So I had to default to my live Z offset method, which worked wonders. So after that, I tried to print again and my results were amazing. I was able to safely print five of these PETG models on a single plate. I was also able to print 15 plus of these scrubber models that I sell in my eBay store. So quality is my number one priority for my customers and both of these models printed absolutely perfectly and the scrubber model itself is one of the hardest things that I can possibly print, especially because it is designed and printed in PETG. So even though this machine really isn't designed for PLA, of course I wanted to put it through its paces. I printed this massive oversized D20 in a purple poly light from Polymaker. Sadly, the printer ran out of filament all the way at the end and there is no reason this should have ever happened. I obviously wouldn't have started this print if I thought I didn't have enough material, which to me says that Chitty Slicer doesn't have the best estimation of material usage. But that's not the most concerning part for me. The most concerning part is that this machine didn't actually pause the print when it ran out of material. So either this printer doesn't have a filament runout sensor or it is improperly configured within Clipper. This really doesn't offend me too much because it's the very first time I've ever run out of filament mid print, but it is a little bit frustrating that it happened on such a large model. Throughout my time, using this machine, I did encounter multiple firmware issues, namely where the screen would just lock up and not allow me to do anything. This issue was not limited to a single menu, rather multiple different menus, and one of which was the menu screen that shows up when the printer is printing. So if I did have to make any changes like the Z offset or the print speed, it wouldn't have been possible. So I know I have been fairly critical of this machine, but I can tell you right now that this machine is a complete 
complete total beast of a 3D printer. All of the print quality is absolutely incredible, the speed is incredible, and it is clearly a competitor to the Bamboo lineup as well as the K1 series printers from Creality. I would say if your primary printing material is PLA, you probably should opt for a different printer, but if you print any more sensitive materials, this machine is incredible. Because Chidi Tech jam-packed this thing with features designed for engineering grade materials, obviously that's where this thing shines. And and what's incredible to me is in terms of engineering grade materials, there is not a single other competitor on the market. It's Chidi Tech. If you want to build a custom Voron machine that competes with this, by all means go ahead. But if you don't want to build that Voron machine, this is without a doubt your best from factory option in terms of engineering grade printing. So if you guys have made it this far in the video, please start your comments with your favorite color and your favorite brand of filament. Guys, thank you for sticking around to the end. And if you would like to subscribe, here's your time. Also, drop a like on the video. I'll see you later. Bye.